Hi everyone and welcome to our talk about IVF and ICSI. My name is Christodoulos and I am an embryologist working for Christ International Sperm and Egg Bank, helping people fulfill their dreams for a family. My talk will be about in vitro fertilization and intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Um, I will try to connect the dots through the, this timeline and help you understand what happens with IVF and ICSI. Uh, all site collection, insemination, fur checks, and embryo development and transfer or cryopreservation are all lab procedures that have been around as assisted reproductive technologies for many years and are used worldwide at fertility clinics. Uh, ICSI is advised after several IVF uh, failures or uh, in the presence of severe sperm abnormalities. So this means that the sperm, for example, can have a defect that might affect their ability to fertilize an oocyte or even create normal embryos. Uh, some extra skills are needed for the, from the embryologist as it requires micromanipulation, handling of the oocytes and sperm uh, under special equipment in the lab. The reason is that uh, we must isolate only a single sperm for each oocyte, either for, uh, from fresh ejaculate or frozen material or sometimes from surgical retrieval. Then we carefully inject it in the middle of the oocyte and repeat the process uh, for all available oocytes. Following the same concept with uh, IVF, uh, we proceed to insemination after a few hours have passed from our site collection. Um, ICSI requires that uh, the oocytes be prepared uh, before injecting them with sperm. This preparation is called denudation uh, in, in our field and we use a special enzyme to remove the cumulus complexes that surround the oocytes. As soon as all the surrounding uh, cells are gone, we evaluate and record the maturation stage of the oocytes, uh, which is something that uh, mirrors the quality. Only mature oocytes are injected with one potentially uh, suitable sperm. Then at once we move the dishes in a warm and safe and optimized environment and we come back uh, 16 to 18 hours later to check for the desired result. We all wish under the microscope. Once we do the fur check the next day and we verify that the oocytes are fertilized, we must let them grow to embryos a few more days. As with conventional IVF, uh, with a satisfactory development, we may end up to embryo transfer or uh, embryo cryopreservation. Embryologists need to be highly skilled and technically talented in ICSI to get the positive results everybody wants. So um, what other factors affect the ICSI procedure? Uh, firstly, morphology, which is about the size and shape of the sperm. When we do the procedure under the microscope, we should select only the morphologically normal moving sperm. And just before injection, we break the tail uh, of the sperm with the fine injection needle I showed you earlier, bringing the movement of the sperm to a stop. Um, motility, another factor, is the capability of sperm to movement. In uh, cases where we cannot find normal moving sperm, uh, we use special techniques that help us identify viable sperm, cells not moving, but actually still have life in them. Only then we can uh, do uh, the injection and go ahead. Um, there are a lot of parameters that affect the ICSI procedure, but some of the most important ones are temperature and pH of the media solution in the dish, uh, which if left uncontrolled may alter the result of insemination or even the embryo development. But overall, ICSI has similar um, fertilization rates with conventional IVF. 
everyone has questions about new and exciting topics. So I tried to gather some typical concerns mentioned by patients uh, when they embark on their fertility journey. Um, what are the success rates for IVF versus ICSI? Overall, the outcome and the success rates are similar when we compare these technologies. But there are other factors like the quality uh, and the number of embryos transferred or the lining of the womb, which reflects the condition of the endometrium, that may have some impact. What are the costs? Well, keep in mind that IVF costs are different between clinics and that you may need to spend some extra 20, 25% for ICSI as it's a difficult procedure that requires unique skills. Is it possible to see my embryos growing in the lab, in the dish? Um, yeah, some clinics may offer you the rare opportunity to view online through a dedicated web portal how your embryos are growing through time-lapse microscopy imaging. That's a novel way of undisturbed culture that is connected to computer systems. Um, what does freeze-all cycle mean? Uh, if your fertility clinic ever suggests uh, following a freeze-all cycle, it means that all normal embryos created through IVF or ICSI can be cryopreserved and transferred at a later stage, at your convenience or uh, when you are ready to extend your family after giving birth. What if uh, I want to use a donor? Finally, if you decide to use donor sperm uh, or oocytes through a reproductive tissue bank like cryos, you will have access to the medical history or other information of the donors in advance. And remember, donors will never have any parental or legal rights uh, to the children being born through this process. Um, eventually, cryos is next to you to help you choose the right one before going ahead with your treatment. So um, to summarize my talk, let me give you a few take home messages about the procedure of IVF and ICSI. Thousands of progressively moving sperm are essential to perform IVF. When severe sperm abnormalities are present or after a couple have had several IVF failures, I uh, recommend doing ICSI. Success rates are almost similar in these two assisted reproductive technologies. Many couples with otherwise untreatable infertility have given birth to healthy children. So remember, if you cannot use your own gametes, treatment with donor sperm or oocytes is always a reliable and a successful choice. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed my talk about IVF and Nixie. Take care. Bye-bye.